Meta released a lot of models as open source. So uh, the massively multilingual speech model, the yeah, image that was model. That's, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you questions about those, but the point is uh, you've open sourced quite a lot. You've been spearheading the open source movement. Whereas uh, that's really positive and inspiring to see from one angle, from the research angle. Of course, there's folks who are really terrified about the existential threat of artificial intelligence. And those folks will say that, you, you know, um, you have to be careful about the open sourcing uh, step. But wh where do you see the future of open source here uh, as part of Meta? The tension here is, do you wanna release the magic sauce? That's one tension. And the other one is, uh, do you want to put a powerful tool in the hands of uh, bad actors, even though it probably has a huge amount of positive impact also? Yeah, I mean, again, I think for the stage that we're at in the development of AI, I don't think anyone looks at the current state of things and thinks that this is super intelligence. Um, and, you know, the models that we're talking about, for the, the llama models here are, you know, generally an order of magnitude smaller than what OpenAI or, or Google are doing. So, I think that at least for the stage that we're at now, the equities balance strongly, in my view, towards doing this more openly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think if you got something that was closer to super intelligence, then I think you'd have to discuss that more and, and think through that um, a lot more. And we, we haven't made a decision yet as to what we would do if we were in that position. But I don't think I, I think there's a good chance that we're pretty far off from that position. So, um, so. I'm I'm not uh, I'm certainly not saying that the position that we're taking on this now applies to every single thing that we would ever do, and you know certainly inside the company, you know, we probably do more open source work than you know most of the other big tech companies, but we also don't open source everything. Right, you know, a lot of our you know, the core kind of app code for WhatsApp or Instagram or something. I mean, we're we're not open sourcing that. It's not like a a general enough piece of software that would be useful for a lot of people to do different things. Um, you know, whereas the software that we do, whether it's like a, an open source server design or, um, or basically, you know, things like memcache, right? Like a, a good, you know, it was, was probably our earliest project, um, that, that I worked on. It was probably one of the last things that I, that I coded <laughs> and, and, and led directly for the company. Yeah. Um, but, but basically this like caching tool, um, for for quick data data retrieval, um, these are things that are just broadly useful across like anything that you want to build, and and I think that some of the language models now have that feel as well as some of the other things that we're building, like the translation tool that that you just referenced. So text to speech and speech to text, you've expanded it from around mm -hmm. 100 languages to more than 1,100 languages. Yeah, and you can identify more than the model can identify more than. 4,000 spoken languages, which is 40 times more than any known previous technology. To me, that's really, really, really exciting in terms of connecting the world, breaking down barriers that language creates. Yeah, I think being able to translate between all of these different pieces in real time, and this has been a kind of common sci-fi idea that we'd all have, you know, whether it's I don't know, an earbud or glasses or something that can help translate in real time um, between all these different languages. And that's one that I think technology is basically delivering now. So I, I think, yeah, I think that's pretty, pretty exciting.